Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining us. Today, it is our pleasure to have Rick Cotton, Executive Director of the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey, back at AVNI. Rick last spoke to us in April of 2019, which really feels like a lifetime ago, where he discussed the transformation of our airports. We're glad he's back, feels a little different, but it is time to give us an update on the LaGuardia Air Train. As most of you know, under Rick's leadership, working with the governor, the Port Authority has reimagined and modernized our region's critical infrastructure, including the renovation and the makeover of LaGuardia, the reconstruction of runways at JFK, and a brand new terminal at Newark, to name just a few. We're so appreciative that he and the governor make sure to inform our ABNY members first very early in the process as he works. And we're glad to have him back today to talk about the air train, which will provide sustainable, reliable, and efficient travel between LaGuardia and Midtown Manhattan. Projects like the air train are exactly the kind of projects we need right now. Look, in the short term, there are certainly less travelers everywhere, including New York, but that will change. And while we all love a good Zoom, more than that, we love to go places and have real life experiences and travel will be back and our city and our state have to be ready for when that light turns on and people will reconnect in the way that they used to. And I believe kind of even more passionately than they did before when we're allowed to reclaim parts of our lives which have gone away for the sake of safety and the pandemic. We're especially lucky as New Yorkers to have someone with Rick's wisdom and experience to rely on during these critical times. He had a stellar career before taking this job. He clerked for Supreme Court Justice William Brennan. And I wanna take a moment to recognize the tremendous loss that we had on Friday of Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. She was a Brooklyn native who came up through our public school system to become a hero to our nation. As someone who has read the book, I Descent to my three daughters more times than I can remember, I joined so many feeling that we are so proud of what she did for our nation, what she meant for our city and our nation, and we are all really going to deeply miss her and the incredible giant that she was. Also, Rick and government served in the Carter administration and as general counsel at NBC Universal. He has worked as Governor Cuomo's infrastructures are important projects like the Moynihan Train Hall and Penn Farley Complex, the Governor Mario M. Cuomo Bridge, the expansion of Javits, and the MTA Second Avenue subway. subway. Clearly, Governor knew what he was doing when he pointed Rick as the executive director of the Port Authority, given all that he's done. We're also pleased to be joined today by a longtime Abbey Steering Committee committee member Patty Ornst, who for the past seven years has been director of New York State and Local Government Affairs at Delta Airlines. Patty knows the India ins and outs of the aviation industry to moderate today's conversation. She was a VP of Aviation at New York EDC during the Bloomberg administration. She spent seven years at Airports Council International North America as the Director of Legislative Affairs. We're grateful to have her with us to moderate this conversation. Thanks, Patty. First now, we'll turn it over to Rick for some remarks, uh, and then we'll come back for a conversation. Over to you guys. Thank you very much, Stephen. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here, and I appreciate that introduction. I also join you in mourning the passing of Justice Ginsburg. Uh, she was a giant and she will be very much missed. So I am here today to talk about the LaGuardia air train. Uh, of course, it's worth starting out uh, with the same irony you just uh, referred to, which is we're talking about transportation infrastructure and particularly a uh, airport infrastructure at a time when travel is down at levels that we never could have imagined prior to the COVID-19 crisis. But we firmly believe that travel will come back. It's a question of when, not if. People look forward to travel. Travel will resume. And we are talking about infrastructure that has uh, a long construction period and a long expected life. And the governor has been the leader in the nation in terms of turning to the infrastructure agenda. Uh, he has the largest infrastructure program in New York of any state in the country. And it's important to put that framework around it. So why here and why now? 
specifically? Well, the reason is that the LaGuardia air train is in the midst of its environmental review by the Federal Aviation Administration. They are draft going through the NEPA environmental review process. They published three weeks ago their draft environmental impact statement. This week, we'll see virtual public hearings and the public comment period, which uh, will extend until October 6th. So the purpose of this discussion is to outline the current thinking and status of the air train and to ask everyone who is concerned about infrastructure, who is concerned about the future of New York, who is concerned about having a transportation system that is worthy of the region uh, to express their support for the air train project. Just to put it in context, we need to talk about LaGuardia itself. Governor Cuomo in 2015 appointed the Airport Advisory Council and charged the panel with coming up with a master plan for LaGuardia and for Kennedy. They did that. And they moved to do what the Port Authority had not done, which was to create a master plan for a 21st century airport meeting global standards. The old LaGuardia, the bad old days. LaGuardia was universally considered the worst airport in the country. It was the airport that people love to hate. But we are putting those days behind us. Turning to the new LaGuardia, it is an $8 billion redevelopment program. Western half of the airport is a, by our public private, in a public private partnership with LaGuardia Gateway Partners building Terminal B. And we are in a partnership with Delta Airlines uh, rebuilding from the ground up the Eastern half of the airport with uh, the air train stations and a brand new central hall connecting the two. We are totally committed to tearing down every single passenger terminal building and building anew. It is headed to be a 21st century best in class global standard airport. And we have been moving forward at rapid speed. As I said, Governor Cuomo announced the plan in summer of 2015. Since then we have had in rapid succession two groundbreakings, one on the east, one on the west. The parking garage was completed in 2018. Terminal B started to open facilities uh, in December of 2018. And this summer, uh, we had, uh, or last fall, we had dealt one of Delta, Delta's first concourse open. And then this summer, we had the Terminal B arrivals and departures hall and its uh, second concourse open partially. Uh, now, the reason that these milestones are somewhat of a checkerboard is because we are operating the airport at record levels throughout construction. But we are now at a point, and if we can look at the next slide, uh, this, was the, this is the design of the, of the airport. As you can see, multiple new facilities stretching from the west to the east. But if we turn to the next slide, in red are the portions of the airport that right now today are fully complete and open and operating. So let me, without further ado, introduce the new LaGuardia. It is ironic that it has opened at a time of exceedingly low travel. So what I wanna do is bring it alive for those who have not yet had the opportunity to experience it. And let, let me stop talking and let's take a look. Once the world's gold standard, after decades of neglect, LaGuardia was routinely ranked as among the nation's worst airports. So the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey got busy, and with Governor Cuomo's leadership, a new vision for LaGuardia Airport was born with a relentless focus on creating a world-class airport with a world-class customer experience. 
We set out to build the nation's first new major airport in 25 years, at a time when LaGuardia was handling record-setting passenger volumes month after month, and we wanted to do it fast. We are proud to welcome passengers to the new Terminal B Arrivals and Departures Hall, developed in partnership with LaGuardia Gateway Partners. It's the biggest milestone yet in LaGuardia's complete $8 billion rebuild. It follows the the opening of the airport's first two new concourses and 25 new gates. Today, fully one-third of LaGuardia's passengers go through these new gates. Terminal B's Eastern Concourse had opened in late 2018, and Delta's first new concourse had opened in October 2019. Now, in the summer of 2020, we have opened this extraordinary arrivals and departures hall. Here's a quick tour of what to expect when traveling through the brand new terminal. As you will see, these new facilities feature advanced security protocols and COVID-19 safety protocols. The COVID-19 protections include plexiglass partitions, omnipresent hand sanitizer and disinfectant wipes, physical distancing, and touchless technology. As you enter our new 21st century terminal, high ceilings and sweeping windows illuminate the departures hall. You'll also notice the eye-catching sculpture and the mosaic mural two of four commissioned permanent art installations found in the terminal through a partnership with the Public Art Fund. The new LaGuardia is not just about 21st century functionality, it's also an uplifting and inspiring environment. As Governor Cuomo has laid out in his vision, it's civic architecture at its best. Greatly expanded ticket counters and plenty of self-service kiosks make for an easy check-in experience. After ticketing, you'll pass through the security checkpoint which includes state-of-the-art screening equipment and three times as many lanes as the old terminal. To reduce wait time, the body scanning equipment is the most advanced available, a first in the country. A smart carry-on belt allows up to five passengers to put their items in bins at the same time, making screening faster. Spacious recomposure areas allow ample room for gathering your belongings post-security. After the checkpoint, you'll move up an escalator or elevator to the top level where you'll discover exciting new shops and restaurants highlighting the best of what New York has to offer. Here, you can sip a coffee and relax near the water feature or do some last minute shopping before your flight. Dining areas feature an array of choices for travelers from a wide variety of grab and go options to easy contactless ordering from your mobile device. And even gourmet sit down dining ready for when COVID restrictions are relaxed. You will also find spacious and thoughtfully designed restrooms with touchless features throughout, as well as family restrooms, nursing rooms, and also pet relief areas. An expansive pedestrian bridge will take you into the new Eastern Concourse, and soon aircraft will taxi underneath the bridge, allowing up-close views of aircraft movement below. Larger and redesigned airplane taxiways will reduce congestion and delays. Once you reach the gate area, you can enjoy the airline clubs, more shops and restaurants, as well as a park and children's play areas, all with plenty of comfortable seating, enabling physical distancing, and power outlets for charging. When flying into the new Terminal B, arriving passengers will follow escalators or elevators to an all-new arrival experience and a quick and easy exit. Nine new large baggage carousels are designed to comfortably accommodate even the busiest travel days. It's just a short indoor walk either to the queue for taxis, protected from bad weather, or to shared ride at base vehicles, also protected from the elements, located in the new Terminal B parking garage. Eventually, a second sky bridge with exciting vistas of New York City will open as part of the completion of the new terminal in less than 18 months. Terminal B is the biggest step yet towards a whole new LaGuardia, which will eventually comprise 2.7 million square feet, 72 new gates across six new concourses, a brand new Terminal C being built by Delta with an arrivals and departures hall opening in early 2022, a central hall leading from Terminal B towards Terminal C as part of creating an integrated airport, an air train LaGuardia enabling passengers to get to the airport from Midtown Manhattan in under 30 minutes, and 9.2 miles of new streamlined roadway network. Come enjoy a new world-class travel experience that is worthy of the region. Welcome to the new Terminal B at LaGuardia Airport. So pictures worth a thousand words. Uh, 
Terminal B uh, has turned out exactly as planned as a world-class airport. Terminal B is now 80% complete. Delta will um, complete its arrivals hall over the next 18 months. And you don't have to take our word for what the new Terminal B looks like and what that experience is like. You can turn to the reviews that it's gotten. If we go to the next slide. So here you see the headlines, New York's LaGuardia Airport like you've never seen it before. LaGuardia goes from third world to world class. Hard to believe you're at LaGuardia. From disgraceful to breathtaking, LaGuardia's high-flying makeover has travelers doing double takes. That, are, that is a fair and inspiring uh, set of comments on what you've just seen. So we have a world-class airport in the making, $8 billion but there's one big remaining problem, access. Routinely, customer surveys identify access to airports in general as a key criterion for a world-class airport. It is a particular criterion for turning LaGuardia into the world-class airport that the region deserves. Currently, what do we have? Congested roadways. Everyone who is on this Zoom virtual meeting knows the roadways of which I speak. What that means is unreliable travel times to the airport and air pollution and greenhouse gas emissions far beyond what they should be. It's bad and it's getting worse. While we're in the COVID-19 period, the tr travel will come back, the traffic will come back, the congestion will come back, and the pollution will come back. LaGuardia is the only major East Coast airport without a direct mass transit rail connection, and that is simply unacceptable. What we need to do is get people out of their cars, and only a rail mass transit lake will do so. Currently, single digit percentages of passengers use public transportation to get to the airport, and that has to end. AirTrain LaGuardia will provide a less than 30 minute trip from Midtown to LaGuardia. It will, it will provide what is currently not available, reliable and predictable access, and we will build with great care a seamless connection at Metz Willits Point so that from the Long Island Railroad station, which will be directly below the air train. High-speed elevators will make the connection exceedingly easy. And similarly, the seven subway train will be a short walk under a covered walkway to the air train. Let me show you the route. So the access uh, to the airport uh, at the point <coughs> at which the air train opens, which will be 2025, Long Island Railroad will go into both Penn Station and to Grand Central so that from either uh, terminal, either station, it will be a two-stop, 16-minute ride to the Willits Point Station and the connection time from Willits Point on the air train will be six minutes, under, under 30 minutes. And you can rely on it. And it is that kind of experience that will get people out of their cars. to summarize the LaGuardia air train benefits. If you look at the first three bullets here on this, it's actually a terrific trifecta. Predictable, reliable, sustainable airport access, that applies to passengers headed for the airport. But equally important, it will reduce airport related traffic on the local roadways. It will reduce congestion. It will get airport passengers out of cars and off the streets, off the roadways so that others will have easier travel. And third, it will reduce greenhouse gas emissions and air pollution. It is the, it is environmentally, it is a huge environmental positive. But there's more. 3,000 union construction jobs and easier worker access to airport jobs. At a time when the economy is in a ditch, this project can contribute substantially to a more vigorous recovery. In addition, 
Following in the footsteps of the airport project itself, this project will provide hundreds of millions of dollars for local businesses and for minority and women owned businesses. Its projected annual ridership of anywhere from six to 10 million riders is a substantial contribution to avoiding the traffic congestion to which airport, uh, airport travel now contributes. And very importantly, and I'll say a little more about this in addition, it is a route that requires no takings of private property and no construction in built up areas, either residential or commercial. We can go to the next chart. Now, until three weeks ago, the, uh, uh, the route of the air train from the airport to Willets Point was a route that had been determined based on extensive engineering studies, consultant studies, consultation with the community carried out by the Port Authority. With the publication of the draft environmental impact statement, the Federal Admin Aviation Administration agreed with our assessment that the alignment, the route that we have proposed should be the preferred alternative and the FAA conducted its own thorough and independent analysis of alternatives to come to that conclusion. We go to the next slide. So here you see the route that the air train will follow from the airport. Uh, there will be two stations at the airport, one at the Central Hall and an east station uh, near Terminal C, which is the Delta station. It will follow the northern edge of the eight lane Grand Central Parkway until as you see in the middle of the slide, it will turn slightly south uh, in through the median of the Grand Central Parkway, then cut across the Mets, a corner of the Mets parking lot and ultimately reach Willits Point where the station will sit above MTA territory. So a few, a few observations about this route. It is fully on public land. As I said, it requires no taking of private residential or commercial property. It requires no construction in built up neighborhoods and the route responds to community, to our community consultation. Originally, the route was planned to be in the median of the Grand Central Parkway, and the community asked that the route be moved to the northernmost edge of the Grand Central Parkway, uh, which this alignment represents. As, <clears throat> as part of our construction, uh, the Port Authority will also improve the promenade that currently runs along the Grand Central Parkway, as you can see in this, in this rendering. And we are committed to leaving the promenade in far, far better shape than it currently is. So to recap the passenger journey, we'll go to the next slide, there will be a modern LaGuardia air train ticket booth and station uh, uh, boarding capability at Moynihan train hall. There will be facilities at Grand Central Station uh, for individuals who want to either travel from or to Grand Central. The air train station at Metz Willett Point will be directly above the Long Island Railroad station and through high speed elevators will allow easy access to the, to the air train at that point. And it will bring the traveler directly to either the east station at Terminal C or the west station at Terminal B. In summary, I would ask uh, anyone who is concerned about world-class infrastructure, world-class airport capabilities, and certainly uh, improved access to LaGuardia to offer their comments online 
these links will be available either to actually submit them online or to email your comments. I commend this to you. I appreciate your attention and uh, the Port Authority is proud to not only be building a world-class LaGuardia airport, but providing direct rail mass transit access to it for the first time in its history. Thanks for listening and I'll turn it over to Patty Orns. Great, thank you. Let's uh, get right into it. Rick, thank you so much for the uh, detailed over overview of the project. In my mind, it's sort of the last piece of LaGuardia. We've got Terminal B, as you mentioned, is nearing completion. You've got the Delta project on the other side that is in full construction mode. Um, fortunately, as, as uh, folks know, we have been, uh, we were able to continue construction through the last several months as we were going through this pandemic. So we've gained some speed on that front. Um, and now talking about schedules, because I, from personal experience, know that it's your favorite subject. So <laughs> the draft EIS states that the construction will begin in 2021. Is that schedule still uh, accurate, given the current fiscal challenges facing the Port Authority, also with your $3 billion um, relief funding request before Congress? Do you see this uh, time frame getting impacted? Well, we are, we're committed to finishing the two major airport projects that we have underway. One, which I just discussed, obviously, is the LaGuardia project. The other one uh, is a $3.5 billion project, Terminal 1 at Newark. An integral part of both projects is air train and, improve, is, uh, and, air train and improved access. At LaGuardia, it is a brand new air train uh, that has not existed before. Uh, at Newark, it is replacing an air train that is well, well, well beyond its useful, its useful life. And we are committed to finish the airport projects as they should be finished with dramatically improved access. We are under enormous uh, pressure. Uh, as I frequently say, the Port Authority is intended to be a self-sustaining entity. Uh, it has been that for its nearly 100 year history. We drive our own revenues from either commercial arrangements with our business partners or from tolls, fares, and fees. In normal times, those revenues significantly exceed our expenses and we devote every penny of the excess to our capital plan. We have made very clear, very loudly, publicly, and to the Congress, the fact that this is an unusual circumstance. And we, have, we project that we will lose $3 billion worth of revenue over a 24 month period. What that does is to force us to re-examine from the ground up our capital plan. And we are in the middle of that in order to accurately understand what the implications are for the full capital plan requires understanding two things. One is whether or not we are going to get help from Washington as we have requested. And secondly, we need to refine our projections in terms of what exactly is the recover, travel recovery going to look like. In terms of the Port Authority, the travel recovery on our crossings, tunnels and bridges, has actually recovered a bit faster than uh, we anticipated. Uh, the, the seaport has been extremely resilient. The supply lines are extremely resilient. However, aviation and PATH, our commuter railroad, are experiencing uh, or look like they will in the future. They haven't yet, but look like they will fall below uh, our uh, revised projection. So we're trying to integrate all of that. We're trying to understand it in terms of our capital capacity. It is going to depend on both of those factors. But, uh, and, and we are going through that process. And to some extent, uh, the capital plan is going to have to be revised to at least some extent. But we also have to have uh, pillars. And uh, the, the pillars of where we are now is we are committed to finishing. We're not going to leave these two major airport projects unfinished. And that includes 
the two air train projects. Excellent, excellent. And I know on, I know air travel is uh, obviously from the Delta standpoint, we are obviously seeing, um, you know, a, a down to our, but expect that uh, air travel will come back. It's just a matter of when. Um, another favorite topic of yours, I know, is MWBE. You spoke about it briefly in your presentation, and there was uh, questions coming in from the audience. Can you talk a little bit more on about the details about the MWE program you anticipate around the air train? Absolutely. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, we have put an enormous amount of energy into assuring that the our, that our construction projects provide benefits to the communities immediately impacted by those, by those projects. So if we take the airport project itself, some $1.4 billion worth of contracts have gone at this point to minority or women owned businesses. And we're very proud of that record. There are very few projects in the country that have been a, an, able to engage minority and women owned businesses to that extent. On top of that, we have been able to issue nearly half a billion dollars in contracts to businesses that are based in Queens. And it is exactly that pattern and that record that we are committed to achieving also with regard to the air train as well as with our other projects. We have a very active focus on that. We require all of our contractors to have plans specifics as to how they are going to achieve the goal of having 30% of contracts go to minority or women owned businesses. And we are fine tuning that at every uh, at every moment, we are actually in the midst of putting in some additional revisions to our MWBE programs in order to strengthen their performance even beyond what we have uh, achieved to date. Excellent. Let me remind the audience, please feel free to use the Q&A um, logo up top. You can submit your questions and uh, we'll try to answer, get to your questions and try to answer them. Um, let's talk. Um, I know the port's facing their uh, financial crises, but I also know, we also know the MTA obviously is seeing a budget um, deficit of about $16 billion. MTA is talking about reducing service, canceling planned capital projects. How can you be sure that MTA will be able to pay for the Long Island Railroad station upgrade that you've talked about in your presentation and the increased service that's required to Willits Point once the air train is built? Um, now that they're facing their historic deficit, how do you how do you see this playing out? Well, uh, the MTA has been a terrific partner in this project, um, providing a public mail transit link to the uh, to the airport. I would uh, most public transit agencies have embraced uh, that goal, and we're talking about a uh, a, a project that uh, in construction will extend over the next five years or so, and the, um, the existing um, Long Island Railroad Station um, has been and is, as my understanding, a, a part of the MTA capital plan, and we will certainly continue to, to work with them. I don't want to speak for them, but um, certainly the uh, uh, public transit system uh, that, is a, that supports rail mass transit uh, is really at the uh, core of what uh, uh, a public transit system is about. Great. Let me, uh, a question that came in from the audience, Rick, here it is. A key to airport express travel popularity and success is a one seat ride, which this is not. So given our constraints, how exactly is the hands off at Willits accomplished? Well, um, I urge uh, the questioner, in fact, maybe we could distribute to them a uh, uh, letter that has been uh, submitted to the FAA in support of the project, which squarely addresses the one seat ride issue. I mean, we are, 
it is the reason that I spoke about the uh, seamless and convenience of the transfer at Willits Point. Uh, we recognize that uh, in order to be successful, the transfer to the air train must be easy, must provide for uh, all of the special needs that individual travelers may have. And we have made that a focal point of our design efforts. Uh, that is the reason the air train station is literally built above the Long Island Railroad station so that high speed elevators can make the transfer from the LIRR to the air train as easy and convenient as possible. It is a very short walk from the number seven subway line, but the engineering issues in a built environment uh, require that uh, you build what is possible to build. And this, uh, th there's really no other route, even a one seat ride that you might imagine that can deliver any significant improvement on travel time. So uh, building something that is possible to build, taking into account uh, the community desires, taking into account the difficulty of building through built up areas, the difficulty of utilizing uh, condemnation to take uh, private homes or private businesses. Uh, this provides an extraordinarily quick connection. It is buildable. It is, uh, it is three quarters of the way through the environmental review process. And we believe it achieves the key objective which is a fast, predictable, reliable access to the airport. And I would add that, you know, we see that the JFK air train worked out and it's similar, right? You're having to take the subway and then do the changeover. So, and that has been, obviously we've seen record numbers on JFK air train um, and, well, and increasing. Yeah, I mean, just to elaborate on that point, um, the projections, the predictions for ridership on the JFK air train turned out to be woefully wrong. And the actual experience in terms of riders taking, passengers taking the JFK air train and making the transfer in what is not ideal circumstances at Jamaica has wildly exceeded the prior projections. So this uh, a rail mass transit link in terms of access to the airport is not only critically needed, but it will be widely used. So another, I feel like my questions are doom and gloom and these questions are coming through Q&A, um, but I have one here that I'd like to just finish off is, um, as we talked about, we, unfortunately the New York airports has seen, um, was, has been, has been impacted, um, work, by COVID and we've seen a dramatic dip in travel. Uh, we're see, still seeing numbers probably 70% down from you know, the year before. What it, and we know that for it will take years to recover that travel back. What is the real impact of the pandemic on the air train's likelihood of being built? And if it is built, will anyone ride it? I know you've talked about it a little bit before, but I think emphasizing that to the group is important. Well, the answer is millions of people will ride it. And uh, millions of people currently ride the JFK air train, as I mentioned, far above what was originally predicted. And uh, this is a package, which is we're committed to a 21st century global standard airport. We've done a lot of the heavy lifting in terms of rebuilding the airport. This is the first new major airport in the United States in 25 years. A key aspect of a global best in class airport is to have a rail mass transit link to the airport. And we are committed to providing it. Rick, we have another question about access, uh, different access points from, from Manhattan onto the air train, and how frequently do we see the trains running between Penn and, and Grand Central? Um, 
the the current target is to have uh, four trains an hour. Um, we need to uh, continue to uh, to confirm that, but that is our that is our target, and the uh, uh, obviously the at Willets Point it is a connection to both the Long Island Railroad uh, network. It is a connection to the subway network, and to the extent people have other uh, destinations, uh, they can utilize those um, in terms of every place those networks networks go. If you look at the actual uh, use of uh, LaGuardia, a disproportionate percentage of passengers do come from uh, from Manhattan, and that is the reason to quote the travel time from Midtown Manhattan, but uh, the uh, air train ties in the airport to uh, the, uh, the subway network and to the entire Long Island Railroad network. Do you see, are we seeing any impact on the SBS bus lines because of the air train or will, how, how will that be impacted, if at all? Well, what we know about the, the bus lines is that they're used by well under 10% of the travelers. That is not a way to get people out of their cars, just isn't. And so at some level, you have to face that reality. And if our goal, if our goal is to get people out of their cars and to provide a reliable and predictable travel time to the airport that is not affected by congested traffic conditions, which occur uh, with all too great frequency at peak times and which pre-COVID obviously were increasing uh, and will increase, uh, the, uh, to the extent that people want to use the SBS buses, uh, they will, uh, that's an MTA decision, but that will be available to them, but we know the results. It's not a matter of conjecture. People don't use a link, a, tra a mode of travel to the airport, which requires a transfer from a subway to a bus. The entire experience at LaGuardia has demonstrated that. And to your point, Rick, we have a number of questions about the Port Authority's alternative, alternative versus the designated bus lane or a subway line extension. We know that there were a number of considerations and options on the table. Can you talk a bit about why the FAA has given its initial approval to the Port Authority's proposal over the, you know, 40 or something other options that were considered? Because they looked at the other options and they came to the con same conclusion that we came to which was that was the best alternative available. And so uh, what I would say is we can't, the Port Authority came to that conclusion after an enormous amount of analysis, after an enormous amount of consultation uh, with community leaders. We, let, we chose the, the, um, the, the current uh, pro proposed route. The FAA did its own independent analysis, it came to the same conclusion. And uh, I could talk a long time about the reasons for that conclusion, but it is an independent validation and verification of that being by far the most preferable route for the air train to follow. No takings, no private residences, no private commercial, no building in a, uh, no construct, heavy construction in a built up area and it produces an under 30 minute travel time from Midtown Manhattan to the airport. That is, uh, what, <laughs> what more is there to say? So I think what I would also add to, to the people, folks watching and listening, uh, we have hearings coming up, the FAA hearings coming up next week, gives everyone opportunity to comment on the project. I encourage everyone to submit comments and we do, uh, we've established a, an air train coalition as well. If members, if folks are interested in becoming a member, um, feel free to email. Uh, the ABNY team, Melva and the team have details about how to become a member. Um, there's a lot of moving parts to this, obviously. We've got things going on. We'll, we'll also be sending out uh, links where you can submit comments and 
where um, where you would be able to watch the virtual public hearings. I, I've been to a number of them in the years past and you know FAA staff is there and uh, to answer any questions. So it, it is a robust, um, it is worth the uh, time to do that. Uh, any comments, last comments, Rick, before we close out this afternoon? Well, I, I'd like to close uh, by thanking ABNY uh, for supporting uh, the air train project. I'd like to thank uh, the uh, 20 or so other organizations that are members of the uh, Better Way to LGA coalition for supporting the project. Uh, and I uh, look forward to staying in touch and to uh, moving the project forward as uh, as quickly as we can well thank you rick for your leadership and i know most of our questions were doom and gloom but i know through your leadership we'll get through this and i appreciate your support um these last few months especially and um so i'll invite stephen back to the to the screen hey guys thank you everybody patty thank you rick thank you um I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move away from doom and gloom. I'm going to say this is going to be exciting. I'm going to say this is the kind of infrastructure that made New York, New York. And it made us kind of, you, you know, leverage what was best about the city, our diversity, our people, and the ability to bring people here as well as easily get, get, get ourselves in and out. So, Rick, I know you had COVID. I know you survived COVID and, 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 and worked your way through it. We were glad you didn't miss a beat. Uh, as much as our hearts go out to all the New Yorkers who did have the disease and succumb, this has been a hard time for all of us. I think these are the kind of projects, along with lots of other things, that really point towards a future that I know will be bright. So thank you, everybody, for joining us. Rick, thanks for, for doing this. We'll get Hopefully through this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.